It's a great year. Today we're going to see how much ink is inside a dry erase marker and see what it's like when it's not in the pen. For pretty much all of my school experience, my teachers would use dry erase markers up on the boards. It wasn't the only thing they did. We had actual chalkboards at times, we had the overhead projectors, and eventually digital projectors that were showing things that were just on computers. But I've always been interested in these dry erase markers, and today I want to look at what is inside these and see how much ink we can get out of one pen and out of dozens of pens. Here's the basic idea. We're going to extract the ink out of a bunch of dry erase markers and see what it's like in larger quantities. What happens if you spill it? What happens if you get it on your hands? How flammable is it? If you are unfamiliar with dry erase markers, at their core they work the same as any other marker. There's a well of ink in the back and there's a foam nib up front that lets the ink come out at just the right rate so that you can draw on stuff. What's special about dry erase markers is the formula of the ink. There's a few basic components. There's a pigment, which is what gives it its color. There's a solvent that helps in multiple ways, both in delivering the pigment and in evaporating away to leave the ink pigment behind. And then in the case of dry erase markers, there's a third main component that helps prevent the pigment from sticking to whatever you apply it to. I've got a whiteboard here, and if I wrote on it with a permanent marker, it wouldn't wipe off with my thumb or a piece of paper towel or an eraser. It'd stay there unless I used a solvent to clean it off. But these dry erase markers aren't like that. I can draw on the whiteboard, and as soon as the solvent dries up, I can just wipe this away. Nothing stays behind on the board that's visible, and there's a little bit of residue on my finger, which I use to wipe it off. That third ingredient is usually some form of silicone-based polymer, although of course it's going to be a trade secret what exactly is being used. Both the pigment and the release agent should dissolve into the solvent. That's usually isopropyl alcohol or maybe a couple other kinds of alcohols as well. But once that dries up, the pigment and the release agent separate from each other, with the pigment staying on top where you can see it and the release agent below, meaning that you can wipe the pigment off and it's not going to stick to a non-porous surface. Of course, these are still going to be permanent on some things. If I drew on a piece of wood, it's not really going to rub off. It needs a closed surface like glass, some kinds of plastics, or well-polished metals to not get absorbed in. I've got a whole bunch of dry erase markers here, probably the most I've ever had within my reach at once, and today I want to see what happens if we take the ink out of the markers. What's it like in larger quantities? I've drained the ink out of other types of pens and markers before, but I haven't done it with dry erase, and I want to see what happens if I do. All right, let's see what it takes to take one of these markers apart. I've got an assortment of pliers here. Oh, all right, there's the whole nib, and like there's a lot of liquid that like squeezed out when I pinched it with the pliers. Do you see that? Now, am I able to actually squeeze that out? Let's try it. I'm gonna start at the top and kind of ooze my way down. There we go, getting drips of dry erase marker. Not a ton of liquid came out of the nib, but a little puddle. So dripped out like that, there's so much more of the ink that it takes a lot longer for the solvent to dry. It's still just in a puddle. It hasn't dried out yet. Here is the ink cartridge, the well from inside. You can see that's where the nib sat. So the ink would flow down through here into the nib onto the whiteboard. So we've got that much just from the nib. How much do you think we can get out of the whole ink cartridge? I gotta admit, that is way more opaque than I thought it would be. So that is approximately one red dry erase marker's worth of ink. Very thin consistency, not water thin, but I don't know, probably about like milk. I have no idea how hard it's gonna be to get this off my fingers. All right, I'm just gonna give that a minute to sit there and dry off a bit. While it does, I'm curious about if this stuff is flammable. Oh, it's on fire. So it does have enough solvent to make it quite flammable, in fact. That worked really quick. That, of course, makes me curious if you can just light it without taking the liquid out. Some fun colors pop in there, too. I think I saw some green-looking flames. Whatever of the pigment in the release agent that did not get destroyed or burned up by the heat. They're probably not as flammable as the solvent, but it messed with the reaction, so this doesn't release as easily. Some of it's still coming off, especially where it was thicker. Okay, so where it was thicker and maybe didn't burn up everything as much, it comes off. The thin spots, I can sort of scratch it off. Let's see if I can get the marker to light just holding a match to the nib. Indeed I can! Put this over here with the rest of the fire. 
Grace had a suggestion to see what happens if we just use the inkwell and the nib without the plastic housing ruining the effect. I think the whole nib is gonna light on fire as well as the top of the inkwell. Maybe the rest of the inkwell too. I'm not sure yet. Ooh, it's fancy. Much bigger flame. There is still just a slight green tint at times. It's not very bright, but it's there a little bit. I wanna see what happens if we put it in the vacuum chamber. So it doesn't look like much is happening right now. It's hard to tell if evaporation is still going on in there. I imagine it is, but the visual doesn't change very much. I think we'll just leave that for a few minutes and then see what's happened to it. In the meantime, I'm curious, what's up with our red? Is that, that is not dry yet. So that's still like wet, lifting like my fingerprints and stuff. Let's see if I can get a good print. Kinda. All right, this is uh, a little bit of 91% isopropyl alcohol, which I believe is one of the main solvents used in these. I'm going to see what happens if we just drop this down in there. Will it suck the color out? Will alcohol travel up the filter? I'm not sure, maybe both. All right, let the air back in, see if that does anything to it. Okay, for the most part, I think it looks about the same. The stuff on the sides does seem to have dried nicely, which you would expect even without a vacuum chamber. For the most part, not a lot different about it. The channel Smarter Every Day has a really cool video titled The Walking Water Mystery that looks at something visually very similar to this, with the little beads of liquid forming on top of a larger puddle of the liquid. For the most part, that happens when a film of basically air forms around a very small bubble of the liquid. I wonder if this is that same effect happening or if it also could be a little bit of the solvent on the outside of our tiny little drop evaporating, leaving something of a film that holds the little bead of liquid together until it gets dissolved, landing in the puddle of more solvent. Hard to tell which one it is. This has been sitting in our alcohol for a little bit and the color of the alcohol has changed a smidgen. It's a light turquoise tint to it. Our filter full of ink has clearly become diluted down where the alcohol was absorbing into it. You can see it didn't even perfectly mix. There's swirls of color mixed into the alcohol. Ooh, drop it on top of the color you just made. See if it like dissolves yeah. a puddle out of it. All right, here goes. That looks neat. Look how neat. That makes me think that the solvents aren't quite the same stuff. And maybe that's because even our 91% isopropyl alcohol actually has too much water in it. Yep, I think that's just a dry, thick film now. Almost, yeah, there you go. Oh, look at that. Peeling, dry erase ink. Whole bunch of this. The solvent for the most part is gone. So we should have the ink and the release agent. The release agent I think is the oily liquid getting all over my finger here. Let's see if I can squeeze out a whole drop. Oh, it's so close. Get up, get up, get up. There it is, look at that. There's our release agent with barely any tint left in it. It's oil, and my fingers are oily at this point, or it's not really oil, it's silicone-based polymer. Uh. <laughs> so there is some variety, but it's like dark variety. If you get really close to it, you might be able to see some of that. Hmm, brown gray, lovely. Oh, I got angry. This has been fun to see. A lot of stuff I have never done at all. In fact, pretty much none of this have I ever done before with dry erase markers. And it's fun to play with this substance in a different state than you're used to. Unlike Grace, I'd never drained apparently several whole markers worth of ink onto a whiteboard and played with it before. You've never lived <laughs> until today. But fortunately, now I have done that, so my life is now complete. If there's anything else you'd like to see us do with the dry erase marker ink, please let us know. I would enjoy trying some more stuff with this, so I'd love to hear your ideas. Guys, that is it for today's video, but we've got tons of cool stuff for you to see. Go ahead and click that box to check out another one of our favorites, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then. I meant to do that.